Hello, welcome back. Uh, video number 11, I think we're on now. Um, and just to recap from last time, we were building the non-volatile storage class um, NVS that we're going to need for various bits throughout the code, code use, useful to have. Uh, but the first need we've got for this is uh, for Wi-Fi. Um, such that we, when we use the Wi-Fi smart config uh, to send credentials to the ESP from your phone, from the app, um, we can then save that uh, into the non-volatile storage on the ESP so that it um, acts as like a memory stick effectively. So when the power is, is pulled, um, or we have a, a reboot for whatever reason that may be, um, that we can then read those credentials back, the SSID and the password, and reconnect, and we don't have to go through the whole process with your app uh, each time the thing reboots. So we penciled out the way we want the non-volatile storage class to uh, look like, um, and the main interface we've got here is an initialization, which will open the, uh, the partition. Um, and then we've got set, get and verify, uh, which we can do for a single type, whatever that type may be. It could be a float, an int, a bool, um, a struct, anything like that. Uh, or if we want to pass in a buffer, so say a const char star buffer, uh, a C string, in other words, um, we can pass in a pointer um, of whatever that type is, and then the length of that buffer. Um, so how many objects of that type. So if we wanted to save an array, um, so in our case, the, these are the ones we're actually going to be using for the Wi-Fi, because the SSID and password will be C style strings um c strings or const char star um buffers uh so that they are the ones that we'll actually be using immediately for the wi-fi so what do i want to achieve in this episode um we'll flesh out the implementation of these um we've already done some high level bits but we actually need to do the api calls um and uh, the private uh, functions uh, which have we even defined these yet no we haven't so we'll, we'll define these first uh, write the implementation and hopefully by the end of the episode we can flash this onto the SP sat on my desk and we can write some sort of data into non-volatile and then we'll reboot and read that back and make sure that the save um, or the write and the read are working and uh, implicitly the verify as well uh, and we'll put some debug messages in around that so we can see what's going on um, so where did we get to so we have these three protected uh, member functions uh, methods um, which look like we implemented these are all okay but we need to implement an underscore get, an underscore verify, an underscore set buffer. Get verify set buffer. Okay, so that's right, gotcha. Yeah, cool. So let me just pull up my notes. Here we are. And ah yeah, here we go. Right, okay. Um, so we can collapse this down because we don't need this for the moment. Uh, what's this doing? Sorry, it's been a few days, so I've got to re remind myself. Oh, that's just the static. Uh, okay, yeah, got it. Fine, not a problem. Okay, so let's actually start defining the implementation. So, as is reasonably typical, the implementation will be private. Um, and we will oh yeah 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 right okay i remember these are static 
yeah so the implementation is static and we pass it a handle yes i remember okay cool so these are going to be templated uh, so we can uh, as we talked about in the last episode pass any type in and get any type out um, so here we go with the template uh, let's do the get first the getter um, so we'll do a no discard uh, static and we'll follow the normal format uh, of returning the error type oh hang on a minute Oh, yeah, 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 right, okay, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Yeah, so we need to do the get buff, which actually doesn't need to be private, since we've not done the other ones as private. They, mm, yeah, protected's prob. No, changing my mind on the fly here. We want this to be private. We don't want any derived classes uh, randomly calling these these functions. Yeah, private will do. We can change it later if we need. So we've got underscore get buff. And we're going to pass in. A dink. That lot. So the handle. The key. The output which is going to be a pointer so a pointer uh, and a length Yeah, um, can I, how do I get rid of that? There we go. Still a bit long, isn't it? But hopefully you can see it's the same as above, but rather than uh, taking a, a variable by reference, we're taking a pointer. And we could take a pointer by reference, but in this case it doesn't actually make sense to do that, or it adds nothing to do that. Um, so I need to look up, and it's probably worth us going through this in the API, um, how, what the API call actually is. There we are. So we do a bit of zoom it in. Uh, too much. Okay, so the call I'm going to use is NVS get blob. Um, the reason I'm using this, so if we sort of scroll through, we can get uint 16s or int 32s, uh, uint 8s, int 8s, um, strings, so on and so forth. Um, that's sort of the C way of doing it. Um, which is perfectly valid, absolutely nothing wrong with that. And we could implement that here with a thing called template specialization, where we've got this template, but we, when we do the actual implementation of this, we can say, ah, but if that type is a U64, then execute this function. If it's a an int 8, then execute a different function, so on and so forth. That's the sort of C way of doing it. But because we've got the flexibility of templates in C++, um, we, we don't need to have all these different implementations, which would be a pain to maintain. So if we wanted to change something in that implementation, we've then got a load of other ones that we need to change as well. And that's, that's bad. We don't want to do that. Difficult to maintain, bugs. 
can creep in if you fix it in one implementation and forget to do the others. Um, so what we can do is just get a blob. Um, and quite simply, uh, you can see this function prototype is very, very similar. We've got a pointer that we're going to write to, and we've got a length, and it's just going to get that number of bytes. And it says the function behaves the same as NVS gets string, except for the data type, where the data type in this case is a void star, so a, a non-typed pointer. So let's have a look at NVS gets string. So get string value for the given key. So this will be any type rather than just a string. Um, if the key does not exist or the requested variable type doesn't match the type which was used when setting a value, uh, an error is returned. That's fine. Um, in the case of an error, the out value is not modified. Um, all functions expect out value to be a pointer to an already allocated variable or some sort of chunk of memory on the heap uh, or the stack for that for that matter um, support win API style length queries blah 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 uh, the important thing to note here is what length refers to is it number of bytes or is it the number of uh, words so if we have a look down here, non-zero pointer uh, holding the length of out value uh, in case out value uh, a zero will be set, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we're not worried about null terminated strings here because we're going to tell it the length we want. Includes the zero terminator. So that would imply that it's it's bytes doesn't actually say that it's bytes explicitly ah but size is using size of mac address which is bytes so that's going to be six okay cool happy so what we can do here then uh, to get the buffer so first of all we'll do our usual checks Um, and in fact, so number of bytes we need to multiply by the size of whatever the type. So if we've got, for example, an array of um, uint 16s, then and that array is five long so we've got five uint 16s well a uint 16 is two bytes um, so we actually want to read 10 bytes so two times five there so five objects each object is two bytes so to do that we've got t so we know what the size of t is so that's good and then we need to multiply it by length and I'm just going to put a note in here. Length of num items of type T. Not necessarily uh, num bytes. It would be num bytes if we're passing in bytes. Um, so a, a car type or an unsigned car type. Okay, so that's the number of bytes there, super. So if key is null pointer, then invalid argument. Um, if string length of the key is zero, then invalid argument. Okay, that makes sense. Um, we need to add to this, or um, if not output, uh, to be honest, let's do it this way equivalent code so if the output string uh, sorry the output pointer uh, is null then we've got nowhere to write to um, or if len is less than or equal to zero um, it can't be less than zero 
because size t is an unsigned so if zero equals length invalid argument okay so now we can call our get blob um, so we call nvs get blob which is the function call um, we want to pass in the handle we want to pass in the key we want to pass in the output and n bytes which we've calculated there uh, and we want to pass in n bytes as a pointer so we'll take the address of n bytes yeah that's fine okay uh, now output is of some type here we need to convert that um, now you you could do this the old way of just putting in a C style cast um, it's fine there's nothing wrong with it C's been around a long time and lots of stuff works on C but in C++ we've got a slightly more verbose way of doing this um, that has the potential if you use it right to be more safe or safer should I say um, and I think we can static cast uh, to avoid start I'm not entirely sure if not we need to use the dreaded reinterpret cast um, both of which are compile time casts uh, so give you no overhead at runtime let's just see if that builds because I'm not entirely sure if you can static cast to a void star because void stars are bad in general Um, something went wrong. Cannot pass. Oh no, is something updated in the background and I've not noticed? Uh, okay. Let's just check the C makes because that's where the errors come in. No, these look fine. Let's try the next best thing, which is a full clean, then a build. So I'll leave this in the video just because compile time warnings are useful to um, to show, I think. GPIO requires hmm. something has changed, and I bet the extension has, has been updated or something or other that's one I think so use existing setup all configured okay maybe not then if this doesn't work we'll write yeah no it doesn't um I'll tell you the other thing I can do uh, command have I got no I haven't okay we'll do the code then uh, and then offline I will fix the build problems and just talk about it maybe do a, a episode 11.5 or something 11.1 um, uh, with the 
what's going on here uh, but I don't want to bore you for ages with fixing compile comp uh, it's not compile warning it's the actual tool um, because that can take a while to do yeah okay well regardless we'll leave this in if that pulls up a warning we'll pick it up later on um, and we don't need to do anything else with it because this returns the error type um, length we could do something with length Weeper, but probably not. Uh, let's just get rid of that. So let's call that good for now. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Right, let's do the set buff. So again, it's going to have to be a template. And I know lots of people don't like templates. Um, if you use them where they're useful and use them properly, there really shouldn't be a problem. Set buff. Uh, and this is going to have very, very similar prototype here. So I'm going to copy this down. And because this is getting a little bit out of hand here, Let's do that, so at least you can see it all on one screen. There we are. Um, okay, right, we've got a little bit more work to do here. So first of all, we can do the same bit of error checking here. So let's just copy and paste that in. Yeah, copying and pasting code. But anyway, in this case, there's not really a great deal to be gained by making that a function. In fact, it would probably lose your performance adding in a, a function call. Um, so unsurprisingly, we have another function in the uh, IDF called set blob um, which is going to take the buff uh, as probably a void star yep oh in fact we don't even need to cast this because it'll it degrades into a void star anyway yeah good point the whole discussion about uh, whether we can cast is probably mute um, because it'll degrade, it'll degrade into a void star. Nah, you could put a cast in just to be explicit. It wouldn't hurt. Um, okay, so again, we need to con uh, to work out how many bytes we want. And then we pass in n bytes. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, we would assume that we've just written to the non-volatile. Now, if you read the API, that's not actually what happens. Um, it writes to RAM, the RAM copy, um, which gets periodically flushed to the non-volatile, uh, to the actual flash memory. Um, in this case, we do actually want to force it to do a flush because we then want to, to verify um, that it's written because what we don't want to happen um, is for us to think we've written this and then the processor reboots but it was actually stored in RAM so it just got wiped because it hadn't yet flushed the buffer um, and the way we do that there's another API call uh, nvs commit uh, and the handle and is it going to give me some flavor text on that? No, it's not. Uh, but that's effectively, it flushes the buff, uh, flushes the, the RAM copy uh, and writes everything uh, to the, non, the actual non-volatile on the chip. 
Okay, now both of these return an error type. So what we'll do is we'll have a status. Uh, and in fact, we can have that at the top here. Uh, ESP OK, as usual. Uh, and then this can be status equals an assignment there. And here, that can be status equals. And then you're going to see the very familiar code. If ESP OK is status, then we commit. And we need to do an assignment there. And then again, we need to verify. Um, which we haven't written yet. And then at the end of the function, we return status. Uh, verify buff is going to take the handle, the key, um, the output. Ah. Yeah, the output. Because we're going to verify against what we thought we'd written. Uh, and the length. And that's the length, not the number of bytes, because when we will write the verify buff uh, method or function um, to have the same format, uh, we don't want get and set to expect number of items and then verify number of bytes. So that, that would get confusing very quickly. Okay. So last thing. Uh, to do here, and this looks like it's becoming a header only library, which would be good because of the templates. Oh, in fact, that's the way we designed it, wasn't it? Because of the templates, it needs to be header only. Okay, template type name T, oops, uh, and then we're going to do no discard like we talked about earlier, makes no logical sense to verify and not actually check <laughs> whether it um, was successful or not. We'll return the error type uh, and we'll do verify buff. And it's going to be exactly the same Uh, is that I just realized that can be const because we're not going to change what we've been asked. So we'll copy and paste that in. Const, because we're saying we're not going to uh, modify the thing that we've been passed, which makes this the input now. So let's just tidy up our naming here, just so it's clear what we're doing. There we are. This will all make sense in a minute, I promise. Okay, so let's start off with some useful stuff. ESP error type status, ESP OK, usual shebang, and then uh, return status. Okay. Now, we what we're going to do in this verify what we need to do is we need to read the same number of bytes 
as what we've been passed that we're verifying against. We need to read those bytes from the non-volatile and then compare them against what we were passed in. And if the two things match, then we'll return ESP OK. Um, and if they don't match, so there's a discrepancy, then clearly there's a failure gone on somewhere. What's in non-volatile is not the same as what we've been asked to compare against. Now, in order to do this, we need to call our get method to get what's currently in the non-volatile so we can compare it against the input. Um, and therefore, we need some space, some memory to put that information in because we need to pass a buffer. Now, what you can't do in C++ that would be very, very nice to be able to do is say we're going to create a new uh, thing of type T. Um, this is going to be our, our temp, temp buffer, which is going to be of size length and we'll default construct that. So we're saying we're going to create a temporary array of whatever the type is, and it's going to be as long as, or the length is going to be the same as the length that's being passed in. Now you can't do this uh, because len is not known at compile time. It's only known at runtime. Um, so th this cannot compile even if the compiler was working at the moment. So unfortunately, the only way um, we can do this is to create it on the heap. Um, so heap can be allocated dynamically at runtime. Um, the, the stack can't. That was a very bad way of explaining that. Um, but effectively, what we need to do is we're going to have a pointer to uh, buff of nvs uh, that's just what we'll call it here and to create it on the heap we need the new operator unfortunately it'll be of type t it will be of length length and that is perfectly fine to do when you use the heap um, and we're going to create that so this does exactly what what i just said you can't do the only difference being that this will compile because it can be done at runtime um, and it will then this can be quite an expensive operation in terms of clock cycles and so on um, compared to creating it on the stack which uh, is, is very very straightforward when you look at the uh, disassembly uh, but unfortunately there's no other way of creating a dynamically sized array here um, you want to avoid using new and delete as much as possible in embedded stuff. No way in any stuff, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's expensive uh, and inefficient, can cause memory fragmentation and all sorts of stuff. Um, so, uh, and we also need to know something that, that we're not getting. Um, which is very interesting because I've not thought about that. Yeah, okay, we need to modify our get buff. Um, if we remember back when we had a look at the get blob, n bytes actually gets written to um, and it will tell you how many bytes assigned to that key that uh, were read from the non-volatile memory. Now it would be useful to pass that back uh, up the chain. So that means this cannot be const because we're going to change it and use that as, as an out, well it's an input and an output. Um, and to do that, we can't pass it by copy. We need to pass it by reference like that. Now, to stay with this length and number items 
rather than number of bytes, we can't just put len in here because it, it's going to be wrong. Um, so what we need to do is we actually need to do a little bit more work than that, which means that this can't be a single line if statement, which is, well, they're bad anyway, but I like them particularly when you zoomed in like this, uh, but th this can be dangerous. Typically you would want to use braces on everything because um, th this can be very dangerous doing it this way. It would be very easy to say, oh, I want to print out um, ESP log D, uh, whatever our log tag is, um, error invalid something like that. That's why this is dangerous, not using braces, because all of a sudden, what this actually is, is that. So this will never get executed because it's after a return statement. So we will always return invalid argument because indentation white space is meaningless in this instance. Uh, whereas if we were good and had used braces on it, then it does what we expect. Um, so just, just be wary of that if you're copying my coding style here, uh, that you should really use braces. Main reason I haven't, personally, I, I don't mind it, and I've fallen for that trap so many times I, I can spot it, uh, but also because I'm so zoomed in, I don't want loads of lines, blank lines taken up on the screen. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, what we need is our usual ESP error type status equals, and this can be const because we're not going to change it. Uh, we'll pass in the number of bytes, which will get updated in this function call with the number of bytes read, and then we need to save that back to len. So, oh, len equals n bytes divided by size of t. So, if if t is a, a char or, or an unsigned char, um, then the size of that is 1, so number of bytes and the length will be the same. But if we're passing in, say, a uint16, um, and say we've got 5 of them, well, uint16 size is 2, there's 5 of them, so it'll be 10 bytes in total. And if we read 10 bytes back, then we divide that by the size of t, which is 2, remember, uh, which will be 5. So it'll say, yes, we have read five objects of that type or five items of that type. If, however, um, there were actually only four items in non-volatile, um, so this will still be 10, uh, but we will have only read eight bytes, then eight divided by the size of a uh, unit 16 is two, so we'll have only read four. So len will be four. We will have asked for five and we will have changed this so it's only four. So it tells the caller that actually we only read four bytes and not that's at four items and not the five you were expecting. And then we can just return status like that. Uh, so we pass that by reference, len gets updated, because that's our output. Output gets updated here, yeah, that's correct. Okay, good. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, you could potentially change the return type and say like invalid size, if the size in doesn't match the size out, for example. And that might not actually be a bad thought. 
but we'll say for this it's up to the caller to check that the number of bytes they got back or the number of items they got back is the number they wanted um, and we'll just return whether the NVS API was actually happy with what we did um, and how have we done things here yeah we've used equals okay cool <clears throat> So, back to verify. So first things first is we need to get the data that is in non-volatile. Well, we've just done that. So we can say status equals get buff handle key uh, input, no, not input. Buff of NVS. Well, realistically, I should say buff in NVS. Uh, and then len. But we can't because len is const here and here it isn't. So that, that won't work. So what we need is a variable size t uh, n items in nvs is len and then we pass that in like that. Uh, and we'll do if ESP OK equals status. So if we actually read the buffer OK, then what do we need to check? Well, first thing that's that's probably worth uh, checking is whether or not the length is the same. Um, so we'll do that if len equals equals n items in nvs then all is good else status equals esp error invalid length is it invalid length or invalid size oh it's esp error nvs invalid length and we're just gonna hijack and use some of these error codes that are already defined for us uh, you can f12 into this yeah so we're sort of hijacking this a little bit uh, but it works with the ESP um, error to name mac uh, macro or is it function I think it's a function actually Okay, um, and now the last thing we need to do, so if the lengths are the same, we actually need to check whether the data is the same. Um, and have we included string? Yes, we have. So we can use memcompare. Oh, a C function. Oh, dearie me. There we go. So if zero, oops mem compare uh, and then the two things we're comparing which is input uh, the buff in the nvs that we've just read um, and then the length in bytes we need so it'll be len times size of t so if zero equals memory compare input and what we got from the from the non-volatile for the number of bytes that we're expecting um, if it's zero, 
it's a match. Uh, so there were zero discrepancies uh, is effectively what that's saying. Uh, you can look on CPP reference or, or whatever of your choice to see that. Then in that case, uh, data matches. So just be aware of that. If you're not if you've not used memcompare and the C style things before, um, you know if you do that, so you compare in the memory, you might assume that if the memory is the same, it would be true. It would return a true. But because it returns zero, that's equivalent to false. Uh, so it's actually inverted logic compared to what you might think it would be. Um, so data matches, uh, therefore status is equal to ESP OK, and we'll return that and everything's hunky-dory, everything's good. Uh, but actually what we want is if it is not matching, so if there is a discrepancy, then we want to set status equals ESP, probably ESP fail for now. Um, any error that, that you want to use. Uh, not any of those make sense. Let's have a quick look. Invalid handle, key too long. No, don't care about any of that. Part not found. Wrong encryption. No, none of these look obviously good, so we'll just use ESP fail. So we would assume that this function, this method is done. If you've spotted the bug in this or the problem with this, uh, give yourselves a pat on the back. If not, feel free to pause the video, uh, have a read of this. There is one thing that we are doing here that is dangerous. And it's a very, very simple fix. Uh, and it's a trap that everyone falls down every now and then. Um, not just the very first time you, you fall for it again and again. Um, but have a look, see if you can spot it. Well done if you did. Um, so to give the game away, the problem is this line here. What happens if there is not enough memory on the chip, in the heap, whatever you want to say, for this allocation to work, and this allocation fails and returns a null pointer because that it couldn't allocate the memory. So what happens then is we're comparing, well, first of all, we try and get the buffer. So we'll call this method. This will go ding, ding, ding. Okay, output. Output is a null pointer, ESP error, invalid argument straight away. So then verify will return invalid argument, which is weird because none of the arguments were invalid. That makes no sense. So what we really want to do is return something more related to <laughs> the memories full um, which if that happens you've probably got bigger problems anyway uh, but the the way we do this uh, is not there is we do if buff in nvs and then we can do kadink like that So what we're saying here is allocate me some memory on the heap uh, of type T's and it's going to be this long. If that allocation was successful, so if this is not a null pointer, a null pointer, null, zero, false, all are equivalent. They all mean the same thing, largely. Um, they all degrade into the same thing. They don't necessarily mean the same thing. That, that was out of me to say. Uh, otherwise, so else, if this allocation failed, we perhaps want to return something a little bit more useful. Uh, ESP error no mem, I think is the one I normally use. Yes, no mem is there. Uh, no memory. 
So that means that can degrade into a single line if statement. Technically means this can as well. Oh, this look, this is, yeah. Haha, <laughs> right, okay. That needs to stay there. Uh, does it? Not sure it does because that'll get looked at first. You know what? I'm going to leave them in because I don't want to fall down my own trap here because I can't compile it at the moment. I don't want to be showing you code that's definitely uh, rubbish. I was going to say a naughty there. Okay, so let's just run through this, make sure it's doing what we want it to do. Uh, set a variable. First of all, allocate some memory of the correct length of. T, uh, of whatever T is, that item could be floats, structs, classes, who cares, doesn't really matter. If that allocation was successful, we'll get whatever is in the buffer, uh, sorry, in the non volatile and write it into this. Oh, I've, yeah, I've just realized. Um, if that read was successful, then we'll check that the number of items we read matches the number of items we expected. And then if that is true, then we compare the actual data. And if that is false, uh, if the compare fails, we'll return ESP fail. If the number of items is wrong, then we'll return invalid length. And if the allocation was wrong, then we'll return no memory. And if get buff failed for whatever reason, that's already being assigned there, so we'll just return whatever the error get buff gave us. Right, there's another bug here. In fact, worse than that, it's a memory leak. We've allocated this memory, and then we've not got rid of it. So what we need to do here is delete. Uh, yeah, delete using the delete bracket operator, because we're, we're doing an array here uh, of buff in... Oops in nvs and that will delete the memory we allocated on the heap and free it and then it it, it can be used elsewhere um yeah we're using delete with the brackets because we use new with the brackets um you could do that a different way but uh it's nicer to do it this way i think okay so that's our verify done. And just to reiterate, we don't need to implement for single items. Oh, we, we can go back and do this now. Uh, because if we are getting a single item, in fact, let's, let's do that now. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. So let's actually do, let me just make sure, yeah. So get, get buffer is nice and easy because we can just return our static implementation. So well, let's collapse all these down in the hope that we can get it almost on one screen. Don't need that either. Don't need that. That probably won't collapse. No, it won't. So we can return our get buff. Uh, and we need to pass the key, the output, and the length. And we need to give it the handle, which we've got uh, in this object as an object variable, member variable. There we are, simple as that. Handle, 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 handle. Why are they using a uint32 there? Huh, don't know. Anyway, not to worry. Uh, set buff. Will perhaps be a little bit more complicated. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do it that way. Okay. Um, so what we will do, in fact, actually, no, do we need to do it that way? No, we do the verify here. Okay, so we don't need to call verify separately. So actually, this does become very straightforward because we're clever like that. So set buff, input length, blah, blah, blah. Yep, that all works nicely. And then verify, again, is very, very easy. Again, we're just moving here between uh, objects, variables, and statics. Sorry, object functions and uh, methods and static functions. Verify buff input length. These need to be T stars because they're buffers. Const, const. And then that needs to be by reference. Yeah, we've talked about that. So this length will get altered and, and passed back up the chain. Okay, that's fine. I think. Put. Yeah, that looks good. Um, so then our, what if we are just passing in one thing so it's not an array and this is actually the 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 more complicated case uh because we've implemented the difficult case uh so doing it like this is actually quite straightforward come on now because length is one we just want one item it's an array of one it's just one thing uh, I should probably copy and paste that one. And then for verify. It's just one. Lovely. So simple as that. That is this. Done. Bar. Putting in some comments, some annotations, and some testing. Uh, but we're going, I'm going to need to fix my compiler. Uh, figure out why that's... Uh, being a bit weird um, and then when that's working I'll do a, just a follow-up episode to this a shorter one just to verify this working and any any bug fixes there may be but that looks like we've done this class so yeah there'll be a follow-up episode to this where we'll compile it and we'll test it in that episode uh, but until then thank you very much enjoy <laughs>